Today, I wanna to bring you a fast-paced video on how to replace a front lower control arm on this 2007 Honda Odyssey. This same process should work for 2005 to 2010, I believe. I'll try and plug links down below to all the parts and tools I use in this video, so check that out. And if this video helps you out, consider giving it a thumbs up or checking out another video on my channel, because that helps me out. We're replacing the control arm due to a worn out ball joint. Let me just show you the play. If you grab it on the front, got a bunch of play there. I'm gonna start by chalking the rear wheels with some rubber blocks and then set my parking brake. Before jacking the vehicle up, I'm gonna take a measurement from the center of the hub to the fender and we've got about 16 and 3 quarter inches. Using my Daytona Super Duty 3 ton, I'm going to jack it up right on this heavy duty nub right here. And if you're using the hand tools, don't forget to crack these loose first. I've dropped the weight of the car onto stands on these jacking points, but leave your floor jack in place as well. So zip your five lug nuts off. You can use either 22 millimeter or 7 8 socket. Pop your wheel off and slide that underneath next to your jack stand. Now spray some rust penetrant on all the areas we're working on, especially this uh, sway bar link. And all this doesn't look like it needs too bad, but make sure to get the top of your ball joint nut as well. Aside from the lateral movement in this joint, we've also got torn and worn out bushings. Now pop this rear vertical bolt out, a 19 millimeter head. Came right out. And then a 17 millimeter on your sway bar links and take some thin vice grips, clamp it on the steel surface behind it. Be careful not to rip the boot. If we're lucky, this thing will zip right off. And it almost did. Get one more grip on there. Now that time we got lucky. You could see where I was grabbing this on the back, on this big fat surface. You don't want to tear the boot. On these Honda original links, they give you plenty of room to grab it. Only reason we took this link off on one side is to be able to get to the front control arm bolt because you can see it's actually uh, blocked by the, the uh, sway bar. So you could pry this up and probably get it out of your way, but I think the easier option is just go to the other side and remove the top sway bar nut as well. This side has a lot more rust though, so before I even try to take it off, I'm gonna heat it up. Now here's the thing about doing that. I applied just a little bit of heat on the outside of the nut and I cooled it down immediately once I removed it. If you have to heat yours up, you might as well just get new links because inside of here there's a plastic ball seat for the, for the ball joint in here. And if you heat it up, usually it's gonna melt that and then you're gonna end up with play and noise over bumps. So just get new links. I'll plug a link to them down below. Now we can lift this uh, bar up with ease and get plenty of room down there. So I'll, I'll uh, tie this up here. I'm gonna get that lower bolt with this swivel adapter on a 19 millimeter socket and a little short extension. Of course, you could use a wrench to get that out also. Making sure your steering wheel is unlocked. We can rotate this all the way around to expose the ball joint. Get your cotter pin off of there. These Honda ones are an excellent design. They just had this little tab that hooks in there. Gotta love these, reusable. And then a 19 millimeter wrench on this ball joint nut. To get this taper fit loose here, you could use a pickle fork since we're not reusing the ball joint or just take a large hammer like this and hit it really hard on the steel surface. That should pop out of there. Control arm slides right out like nothing. Match your new one up with the old. Looks good. Move this nut and the protective plastic sleeve. And we can now slap this baby in. Start with the rear vertical bushing. Get your bolt started on that. Sometimes a drift punch is very handy for getting that hole lined up. With the rear hand started, slide your ball joint into place and start the threads on the nut. And pop this one into place. Again, get it lined up and start the bolt. I've now tightened my lower ball joint, put the cotter pin back in and tightened the rear vertical bolt. 
But very important here, before you tighten down this one, there is a horizontal bushing in here. And what you need to do is now jack up on the lower control arm until you get 16 and 3 quarter inch between the center of this hub and the fender or whatever you measured yours to be in the beginning. If you don't load the suspension up to its ride height before tightening this bushing, it's gonna tear prematurely like you see this one is. So don't skip this step. You would now go replace the other side if you're doing both arms, but I'm only doing one and I think you know how to do that if I just showed you that. So now go ahead and take your sway bar links and uh, tighten those back down, put your wheels on. Double check all your work, torque the wheels, and you are done. Now, anytime you put new suspension components in, it's a great idea to do an alignment check, since that shouldn't be different with the new control arm, but you never know. And I think that wraps this up. So again, make sure to drop me a thumbs up or comment below or check out my channel if this video helped you. Uh, I apologize if I ran on really long with it. I tried to cover in detail anything you might run into but also keep it fast and to the point. So yeah, till next time, Chris Brown here, No Nonsense, No How, and I'll see you in the next one.